Using Microsoft Forms is incredibly simple and the best way for you to collect research. Now, many of you might have used Google Forms before because that's just everywhere, but Google Forms are really bad for a few reasons. First, they don't work in China. So if you are trying to conduct international research, it's not any good. The second reason is that Google Forms shares your data with you know, Google Search. It puts your data on servers elsewhere in the world. It does not comply with UK's legal requirements. Whereas Microsoft Forms keeps everything in the university's servers and it's all really, really good. And it works in China. So I'm going to work through doing a new survey with Microsoft Forms. So firstly, all you've got to go to is forms.office.com. Really simple link. And you'll log in with your general Office 365 login which you have for the university and you use for everything. Then you're going to go and click new form. It brings you to this title. If you've used Google Forms, it's very familiar. So I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to give it food love survey. And then I'm going to give it, oh, I can't type. Then I'm going to give it a description. So um, finding out about food you love. So that just gives people information. Now what you were doing here normally is talk about whatever you're doing on your research and then talk about what's going to happen so part of the information. So I'm going to add a new area. So I got quite a lot of things you can choose. So you've got your choice boxes which is such as um, what food do you love. I'm going to put some options cheese potatoes, I know, what else? Hot pot, whatever you like. Now, down here are some very important options. We've got multiple answers and we've got required. What multiple answers does is it says the user can select as many of these as they like. That is really important for doing things like top tasks. But if you just want one answer, leave it unselected. So they just choose one piece. But we're talking about food that people love, so multiple is fine. Required means that the person must fill this out before they can submit the survey. That is really important. If you're doing a survey, pretty much every question you ask is important. So making everything required is a really good thing. But you maybe you want to do something where you want to understand why. So you can just say, why do you love this food? Now, you probably don't need that. It's a little extra piece. So just say um, you don't need required, but you could have a long answer, meaning people can write a big paragraph. When you click on here, you can do various things like branching. Now branching is a really important part. So I'm going to go and put a question in here. Um, go for multiple choice. Um, do you agree to take part in this survey? I'm going to have yes, I'm going to have no. Now, I'm going to move this up to the very top because that's the first question you're going to have. I'm going to have it required. It's going to be just one answer, so no multiples. And I'm going to have branching. Now, branching means that we go to a different place based on our answers. So if you say yes, that you agree to take part of the survey, then you're going to go to the next thing. So you carry everything else. But if no, you don't want to take part in the survey, then you're just going to go to the end and everything's complete. So that's going to really just limit things down. So branching is really important if you want to go to different parts of the survey and your answers, such as agreeing to take part in the survey. So let's have a look what else we've got in here. So we can add um, a new text box, which we've done. Ratings are really good. So how much do you rate something? We can use numbers, new stars. So um, how do you rate the food on Elbra campus? So I might say, well, I want to give it five stars or you know, I can change star rating up to 10. So let's keep it like that. Maybe it's required. Next thing I want to add is something very similar to rating, which is a Likert scale. So a Likert scale you've seen before and you know select your level of agreement 
So you give statements such as, I love ice cream, or maybe I hate dairy. Whatever you're gonna say with statements. And the first one could be strongly disagree, then the second one might be disagree, then you're on to neutral, then you're on to agree, followed by strongly agree. You notice that I just typed in the basic ones and Microsoft Forms works out what it thinks I want to put for the rest of them. So it does make life, things nice and easy. Look at scales are very similar to these rating scales. In fact, in some ways they are the same because we could say on a scale of one to five, but look at scales are better because they give a name there. So these are really useful for um, data collection. What else we have? We've got um, dates. Now dates is, you know, when did you last eat ice cream? Or something where someone gets to say a specific date, then click on the calendar and put that in. And I think that is most of the things we have here. So we can move things around, we can upload files. We do have something called the Net Promoter Score, which is absolutely fantastic if you're doing usability. Um, so how likely are you to recommend us to a friend or colleague? Now, this is a very simple scale. We don't really cover in usability principles and practice because it's a bit too simple. But you do find this a lot that, you know, um, if people would say 10, extremely likely, that's a good idea that they're enjoying what they're doing and satisfied. But we're going to modify this, mend the Elbra campus food to friend and colleague. So a really simple kind of metric in there. Good one to use at the end of a survey, but it's just a general research method. And that really is most of what we're doing. So I can actually upload a file just to show you what things, how it happens. Um, actually, I'll, you know, we can just choose an image and I'm going to do it, upload it from my computer. Go to my downloads. I think I've got some nice cute pictures here somewhere. Icons. Let's have a look. Um, Okay, I'm just going to give a family photo from visiting the aquarium. It's just going to take a second to upload. And I can say, look at this picture before you answer any questions. Now we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much most of what you're doing with Microsoft Forms. Another thing you can do is I can give it a theme. So I click on the theme button and just select anything from here which I think suits the way that I'm working, the way I'm thinking. It's just a nice thing to do. Now I can customize things by adding pitch, my own pictures and adding my own colors, but most of the time just choosing something like that is really good. So where do we go from next? Well, we can go to preview. So with the preview, you know, that's the immersive reader, which means that we can actually just go through things and read out loud, but we just don't need that. That's just an accessibility thing that's built in. I don't know if you can actually hear this on the computer. I'll try to turn the volume up. Food love survey. Finding out about the food you love. Okay, hopefully you can hear that quite clearly. So this feature is for, um, you know, it's, it's, basic accessibility. So remember what we said about accessibility principles in um, GSP 8.3.2, giving audio alternatives to text, that is that built in. And you find this everywhere, um, such as do you agree to pick path in the survey? So I'm just gonna go back and leave that. So I'm gonna say, yes, I agree to part of the survey, and then the next one, load of things come up. Now, with the branching, you'll see that it carries on from wherever you sent it to, until you reach the next branch. Now in my case, the branch is going all the way to the end and it doesn't have another branch, so that's the entire survey. Oh, there's the picture. Um, so if we had another branch, it would have a yes, no thing at the very bottom. We would select something and then it would load questions afterwards, but that's how it goes. So you can see that I can select multiple questions there. I can enter my text in here. I can choose my rating there. I can put a date in here from when I last ate ice cream. I said, how much do I recommend food on campus? 10, it's awesome. Look at this picture before we answer any questions. There we are, isn't that nice? 
Um, that's more for if you want to get someone to look at something like a screen or an interface before they answer questions, um, general research methods. And then here we have our Likert scales. So those are the basic building blocks that you can build almost any survey. Now, as well as having the computer view, you also have the mobile view. So you can just check how it's going to look like on a mobile phone without having to jump into our mobile itself. So that is a very quick run through of what you do with Microsoft Forms. It's a fantastic platform. I highly recommend all of you use it for your research. It is the best platform for your degree.